What's going on everyone, Nick or Catalyst here, welcome back to the channel, I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about what Battlefield 6 needs to have in order to succeed, in my opinion. And I can't stress that part enough, this is my opinion. This is essentially my wish list for Battlefield 6, but with that being said, I want this to become a collective discussion, so please feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions respectfully in the comment section below when the video is over. Now some of you may be thinking that this video is coming entirely too early and I would agree with you, but content for Battlefield 5 is practically non-existent right now and it's going to stay that way for at least another month. DICE stated that the next main content update will occur in May, who knows when exactly that will be but May is about as specific as we're going to get. So while we wait for some Battlefield 5 content to drop, let's take a trip into the future and talk about Battlefield 6. Give us something to be hopeful about for once. First, we're gonna start with the setting and development, and then as the video progresses, we'll get gradually more into gameplay-specific wishes for the game. This may be a longer video, a lot of my recent ones have been, so grab yourself a snack, kick your feet up, and let's get into it. Alright, first let's talk setting, development, and features. There is a lot of talk about the next Battlefield being Bad Company 3 instead of another main title entry, and to be honest with you, I'd be totally okay with that. That leaves DICE with a lot of options in terms of creative availability, and the Bad Company IP is a name that is still very well respected and hasn't been ruined by the company. There are some people that think that it's going to be based around the war in Vietnam, and that would follow the sequential release of Battlefield set in historical conflicts over the past five or six years. For me, I don't really care what setting that game is set in or what branding the game has. I just want it to be a good game, and I think you'll hear a lot of content creators echo that sentiment, but with that being said, I think DICE are going to have to set the game in the modern era if they want to have any hopes of Battlefield 6 being successful right out of the gate. Let's face it, DICE's reputation among consumers is among the worst in the gaming industry currently, and the way to begin to reverse that sentiment is to play into what made the franchise so popular during the last decade, large-scale, versatile, modern combat. Also, what having a modern combat-based game will do is give DICE the narrative green light to create the kind of game they want without the backlash from players concerning historical accuracy or political agendas. I think Battlefield 5 is a very good example of what happens when you try to use the success of your previous title as a way to make a political statement instead of just shutting up and making a successful game. Now, say what you want, but office politics and governmental politics definitely played a role in how Battlefield 5 was received, and DICE would be wise to avoid that in the future. An easy way to do that would to be with a fictional modern conflict. Now, this next point may be a little controversial, but I think that DICE LA should make the next Battlefield game. I know that the studio is not going to be called DICE LA anymore because of a rebrand, but I would be interested in seeing what they can come up with. I've lost pretty much all my faith in DICE Stockholm to create a healthy Battlefield game, so maybe pass the torch to DICE LA for a cycle, and then that will allow DICE Stockholm to have a little bit of extra time to make sure that another Battlefield IP launches smoothly. But back to the modern era game, I think it would be a perfect opportunity to return to having an actual single player campaign, which is something that in hindsight I've really missed from the past two titles. Yet another perk with having a game set during modern times is that you have complete creative control over how the story goes and where you want to stage the game, and in turn that helps with the overall tone and character of the game, especially in the game's multiplayer map design. That's not to say that War Stories wasn't good in Battlefield 1 because some of them were really good, but in the case of Battlefield 5, I think it shows poorly when there is a real lack of a developed story. Were the Battlefield 3 and 4 campaigns Pulitzer Prize winning masterpieces? No, but I think at the end of the day they did a good job at delivering the player an experience in which they could have fun in a shooting gallery but also have a sense of purpose in the story and not be forced to try and care about characters that they are only going to know for about 30 minutes of gameplay. That, in my opinion, is the fatal flaw with Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1 single player, is that even though DICE is obsessed with the idea of these untold stories of World War II and World War I, which vary in authenticity to the real stories, a story is only as interesting as the amount of time you get to spend with it, and 30 to 45 minutes of average, uninspiring gameplay set behind some cliché characters isn't enough for me. If my best experience was me flying as a pigeon, that should really tell you all you need to know. 
Now onto the gameplay specific points, and these are in no particular order, I just kind of have these, you know, scribbled on a piece of paper here. One big change that needs to happen is that attrition needs to be locked away in a dark room and never allowed to see the light of day again. Attrition is one of those features that sounded cool initially and looked good on paper. You know, yeah, let's finally bring back the team play aspect in Battlefield, but after playing with it for about 800 hours, I can honestly say that attrition is just not a fun game mechanic, and you gotta remember, video games are meant to be fun first and foremost. I think that, unfortunately, the type of player base that Battlefield 5 attracted ended up negative affecting how well attrition worked because lord knows how many times I've needed ammo or health and I've had to trek halfway across the map to get it because no teammates would help me. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's just Battlefield teammates, but truthfully, in my 10 years of Battlefield experience, I haven't played with a player base that, on average, has been this low in terms of both game skill and awareness, and I'm sorry if that offends you, I'm just calling it like I see it. Attrition has also resulted in some really bad balancing issues. I think the medic class in particular has become far more powerful than intended, and that's not to say that the medic class hasn't always been strong in Battlefield games because, realistically, who in the heck is going to turn down free health packs in a first person shooter game, but staying alive in this battlefield in particular has become so difficult for a lot of players because of attrition that it's just thrown off the balance of the game completely in a lot of areas, and that's not to even mention the weapon balance in the meta class. Attrition also restricts vehicle gameplay, but I'm not going to get into it because I've already talked about why in my Why Battlefield 5 Maps Are Boring video, which if you haven't seen that video, you should watch it after you watch this video, but yeah, attrition was a flop. I don't want to see it back. Another change that DICE needs to prioritize is revamping and developing an overhaul progression system. This has been seriously lacking in the past two titles, and I mean seriously lacking. Battlefield 1 had this problem a little worse than Battlefield 5 hasn't, but yeah, with these last two titles, there has been nothing to play for once you reach a certain point in the game. And yeah, it's supposed to be that way for every single game. The problem is, is that you reach that point way too quickly. You get the gun you want, you get it gold, and that's it. Rinse and repeat, and you can do this all very quickly. I mean, when a new weapon comes out in the Tides of War for Battlefield 5, I can rank the gun up to rank 4 in about an hour or so, and by that point, I already have all the specializations I need and I can move on to the next weapon if there is a next weapon. You don't even get anything for reaching rank 10 with the weapon other than the mint and gold camo challenges which as we'll talk about later are repetitive and identical to one another so it's like you're doing the same challenges twice. There's no special camo to grind for, there's no challenges attached to progressing your class or weapon beyond a couple of cosmetic challenges early on that don't even really look that great. You get all the attachments up front and you get company coin once you reach certain ranks which is nice initially but it makes you feel empty once you've unlocked everything that you want. You just have to think there is a better way to progress and unlock things in the multiplayer. In the last two years, it's been boring and quick, and it leaves me personally wanting more to do. I think if you repurpose combat roles and specializations to being things that you need to unlock with challenges or overall game experience, that would be a good place to start. To put it into perspective, I'm a rank 87 in Battlefield 4, and I'm still unlocking attachments and leveling up new weapons. Now granted, obviously rank 87, I have not put nearly as much time into Battlefield 4 by any stretch, but I think that when you think about the finished product and unlocking all the guns in the game in Battlefield 1 and 5, and you think about how long it took you to finish in previous titles, there is a difference, and it matters. Sort of along the same lines, the Tides of War and drip feeding content need to go, and no, I'm not advocating for a $60 season pass, I think the DLC should 100% be free, but the content mill for Battlefield 5 has been slow and oftentimes boring, and in combination with the fact that Battlefield 5 doesn't have an enriching progression system, it's made things unbearable at times, especially when one week you get a weapon like the ZK, and then the next week you get an uncommon shotgun skin that doesn't look good and you don't even use shotguns. I've talked about this a lot in the past, but the problem with drip feeding content like this is that you are always going to be disappointing somebody. You can oftentimes go weeks before finding content that you're interested in in the Tides of War. And the challenges you need to complete them are often hysterically easy and you don't feel rewarded when you actually get the prize. But of course you can't make weekly challenges difficult for those who can't play as often, so it's just a flawed system overall. I think DICE needs to revert back to DLC packs or release content in seasons, which appears to be the more popular method these days, during which God forgive me for saying this, they can make a season pass that you can spend boins on to earn extra challenges and special gear. 
As it is right now, drip feeding just isn't beneficial or fun for either side. Although releasing the content in packs might make things more difficult for the development team, I think that unlike with Battlefield 5, if there was enough development time, it might not be such an issue. Speaking of development time, you know what didn't get enough development time? Firestorm. And as a result, it was kind of just left to die on its own when other problems with the game took priority. And with the release of Call of Duty Warzone, it's very apparent the impact a good free-to-play battle royale can have on a game's player base. Firestorm wasn't even a really bad battle royale, it did a lot of things well, it just never received the development support and because of EA's money hungry nature, it was also locked behind a paywall. And as a result, Firestorm ended up being a colossal waste of time and resources and you can't help but think that the time and money spent on a game mode that was nearly dead in 6 months could have been better spent someplace else. If at some point in Battlefield 6, they decided to release a free to play battle royale, that would be in my opinion, a very good move. Next up, assignments. We've already talked a little bit about this when we were talking about the progression system, or lack thereof, but the assignment system itself currently is disastrous. Not only are the assignments overall really basic, repetitive, easy, and disinteresting, but you can't progress through assignments in-game, which means that you have to back out and rejoin servers every time you complete a challenge, which as I've already stated, those challenges can be pretty easy, so you're going to be doing that a lot, and it can get very, very irritating. There needs to be some kind of menu UI that allows you to select and deselect challenges mid-game, but DICE simply might not have the tech for that. Either way, the current system sucks, change it. Battlefield 6 also needs to bring back some of the small quality of life features to the game. Collectible items, community contests and map creation, visible platoon emblems, customizable emblems, and most importantly, making dog tags relevant again. If you're a newer player to the franchise and you've ever heard one of us veterans say, I'm going to take this guy's tags, we aren't just saying that to sound really edgy and probably pretty lame, but it's because melee kills used to actually mean something. Back in previous titles, there were hundreds of special custom dog tags earned either through weapon experience, single player collectibles, or special challenges. And not only were the designs really cool, there was a certain thrill to getting melee kills because every player had different dog tags, and if I remember correctly, you got to keep the tags of the person you killed if you didn't already have that tag, and the dog tag didn't have that person's personal stats, like for a weapon or such. Those small, personable quirks have been greatly missed, and it's time for them to return. Next up, let's talk about gunplay. I'd like to see a return to truly predictable and learnable recoil patterns. Battlefield 5's gunplay is probably the best thing about the game, it's, it's pretty good, but in the same breath, Battlefield 5's random recoil is something that can be really annoying when trying to get better at infantry gameplay. The real devil is the spread to recoil conversion, which adds on extra recoil to your weapon's predetermined recoil pattern. It's a feature that may go unnoticed, but it has a real effect on gameplay, and a lot of players have a very negative standpoint on it. I've talked about this in depth a lot already in my How to Control Recoil Guide. You should go and check that video out as well when you get the chance. Okay, well what about rental servers? This is something that comes up with every Battlefield game at some point. Sometimes we get servers relatively quickly, or sometimes we get community games, a server program that comes to the game a year after launch and barely possesses enough of the basic features to be considered a private server program. I mean, we can't even switch servers in our own community games. Uh, community games was a spit in the face and a disaster, but we're getting off track here. For me, private games needs to be in the game at launch. It needs to be a launch feature. DICE has shown the capacity to make a fairly decent rental server program in past titles. The issue was is that they've elected to scrap the program after every game and start over with a new program instead of just porting the system over across titles. I know that we probably aren't going to get private servers at launch, but it would be really nice. Next, let's talk about animations. There were a lot of animations that were added to Battlefield 5 to make the game more immersive, and to be honest with you, I think that most of them were unnecessary and just caused more bugs for DICE to fix and it negatively affected gameplay. There are some animations like getting into and out of vehicles that maybe can stay, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on those, but other animations like the combat role, healing and ammo animations only hinder the game in my opinion. 
Now there are some animations that DICE continue to add to the movement system that I genuinely enjoy. The advanced vaulting mechanics are something that you really miss when you go back and play older titles. Jumping through windows, barging through doors, it's something that you really don't appreciate is gone until you go back to Battlefield 4 and Hardline and then instinctively try to do those things and then realize that you can't. Sliding does need a bit of an improvement, but a good slide mechanic like before the second slide nerf in Battlefield 1, I felt like that was a pretty good middle ground. It might be an interesting movement mechanic. Time will tell, but I hope DICE continues to advance these vaulting mechanics. They're really genuinely pretty good. Continuing with more praise for DICE here, I know, shocking, but DICE did a great job with reducing grenade spam overall in Battlefield 5. In fact, it's one of the only good things to come out of the attrition system, and I'd like for DICE to continue that in Battlefield 6. Grenade spam was nearly a game-breaking issue in Battlefield 1, and as you can see on your screen right now, it got really bad sometimes. Of course, grenade spam is unavoidable on maps like Operation Underground, but as far as the rest of the game is concerned, DICE has done a good job at not letting grenade spam play the game like it has in past titles, so keep up with that, DICE. So, we've already talked about having private servers being in the game at launch, and that may be a bit of wishful thinking. This is a wish list after all, but for me, what we as a community absolutely need to have at launch is a CTE, or a community test environment. DICE has used the core game of Battlefield 5 as its community test environment, and it's been very aggravating to say the least. Just imagine how many issues might have been prevented or found, and how many horrible design decisions could have been avoided if DICE ran their changes through a CTE before releasing it to the public. I, I'd imagine quite a lot. Especially since DICE has a track record of releasing games completely broken and having to climb their way out of the hole they've dug themselves into, I think having a CTE for Battlefield 6 is absolutely paramount. Moving on, if you go on Twitch and look at Battlefield 5 streaming numbers, you might be shocked to find out that they are extremely low, especially compared to its competition. Rainbow Six Siege is pulling 10,000 views, Call of Duty is pulling around 100,000 views on some days because of Warzone, but what do those two games have that Battlefield doesn't? That's right, competitive modes. Now, here's where I might lose some of you, and I know it's wishful thinking, but hear me out. Battlefield is drastically behind in terms of viewing numbers and overall appeal, and part of that is because there is no established competitive scene. In fact, I'd say it's fairly obvious when you take a look at the most popular games on Twitch. Competition boosts numbers numbers and players. Battlefield currently has neither. Now, there was a 5v5 mode in development that got inexplicably cancelled, so the ideas and the path forward are there, DICE just needs to pony up and actually do it. But DICE hasn't attempted to get into the competitive world since ESL in Battlefield 4, so again, it's wishful thinking. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this video is getting a bit long, so we're gonna go speed through these last few points so we can wrap up the video here. Firstly, DICE, for the love of god, please keep auto-rotation aim assist out of Battlefield 6. There is no place for that kind of aim assist in Battlefield anymore. I think the game without auto-rotation snap aim assist plays much better than the game does with it, and I really would like to see it gone, especially because you were originally so happy to announce that snap aim assist would not be in Battlefield 5 until you turned your back on your word and silently implemented it anyways. Not a fan, please get rid of it. Next, I don't think fortifications should return, and honestly, I think they were kind of a waste of a feature to begin with. Sure, some small things like tank barriers made a difference, but on an average, fortifications were a feature that made players feel like they were contributing to the battle, when the reality is they could have done more by just pushing an objective instead of spending 5 minutes building up sandbags on an objective just to have it blown up by an enemy assault player 30 seconds after they were done with it. I don't see a reason for it to come back. The next thing is a big one, but we're going to have to fly through it, but no limited time came out. I absolutely hate the fact that Battlefield 5 removed Rush, Frontlines, and Domination from being staple, always available game modes, and especially with the popularity of Grind, that kind of makes things worse. And like other players, I haven't forgiven DICE for doing all of this. Battlefield 5's popularity is totally reliant upon what game mode and what weekly playlist is currently available in the game, and apparently it's not possible for DICE to have all of the game modes because it'll break the UI, which is obviously frustrating. So I'll just say this, figure the shit out, and I'll leave it at that. 
I would also like to see DICE rework the squad order system a little bit, especially if they are going to continue with squad call-in features. The artillery strike is very spammable, and the V1, although cool, is a very casual game mechanic that, like Behemoths in Battlefield 1, lost their shine and just became another annoying thing that can kill you instantly with little risk from the attacker. And finally, I think we can wrap up the entire video, summarize everything by saying, Battlefield 6 needs to focus less on immersiveness and more on being a fun, stable first-person shooter. Return visibility, reasonable spotting, great balancing, no suppression. If DICE can do that, Battlefield 6 might have a chance at success. That's the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very interested to see what you think Battlefield 6 needs in order to succeed, or at the very least, what would you like to see in Battlefield 6? If you ended up enjoying this video, make sure that you drop a like and share it around. Subscribe if you're new here for more great Battlefield content. Turn on post notifications if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch. Become a member if you're interested. You can click the join button to see what benefits work for you. And last, but certainly not least, Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Nick or Catalyst, and I will see you all another time.